Hello everyone and welcome to the One Stop Co-op Shop. This is Colin and today we're going to start Quest 3 in the Hobbit series, Dungeons Deep and Caverns Dim. This will end the first box set of the Hobbit. We will be exactly halfway through. Oh, already. <laughs> I will be honest though, I am so excited for the saga, so I'm okay with that. I want to go through these and then really enjoy the saga. 20 quests, you guys. That's going to be amazing. But enough of Frodo's journey. We've got to first get Bilbo to find his ring and to escape Gollum. During their escape from the goblins who captured them on the western side of the mountains, Bilbo was separated from the companions and lost in the lightless caverns below. There he was confronted by the creature Gollum. Meanwhile, the dwarves fought their way out of the eastern gate and down the mountainside. They fled from the goblins' caves only to be surrounded by vargs in the forest glade. In this quest, we are going to have what's called the Riddle Area. This Riddle Area is a new play area that's going to be separate from the staging area, and it represents Bilbo actually riddling against Gollum. <laughs> so cool. And by the way, I just really like that uh, word, riddling. <laughs> We do have to make sure we know that cards in the Riddle area, including Bilbo Baggins, are immune to player card effects that cannot leave the Riddle area except through specific quest card effects. While Gollum is in the Riddle area, he does not contribute his threat during the quest phase and cannot be engaged by players. While Bilbo Baggins is in the Riddle area, the first player still controls him, however he cannot quest, attack, take damage from cards other than Gollum and have attachments played on him by players or even defend except against Gollum. After killing the Great Goblin, which only took Thorin two hits, <laughs> thank you Orchrist, Bilbo's companions fought to win their escape from the goblins. By the time they realized that Bilbo had been lost in the darkness, it was too late to turn back and search for him. Add Lake in the cavern to the staging area, create a riddle area with stage 2A, and follow the setup instructions on that card. Players cannot advance to stage 3A unless both 1B and 2B are complete. Force, reveal one additional encounter card per player during the uh, staging step. So we'll be revealing two cards each round. During the confusion, Bilbo stumbled down a tunnel and into Gollum's cave. There, the hobbit had to outwit the creature Gollum in a dangerous riddle contest to discover the way out. Search the encounter deck for Gollum and Bilbo's magic ring. Place Gollum and Bilbo Baggins in the riddle area and attach Bilbo's magic ring to Bilbo Baggins. Then shuffle the encounter deck. Here we have Lake in the Cavern. This will be in the staging area. X is the number of players in the game, so it's just going to have one threat for us. Players cannot travel here. It's immune to player card effects. After players advance to stage 3, remove Lake in the Cavern from the game. Here we have Gollum and Bilbo's Magic Ring. Oh, the one ring. Gollum here says, Forced, after the first player answers a riddle and fails to find at least one match, Gollum attacks Bilbo Baggins. Do not deal a shadow card for this attack. So he's just going to automatically do two points of damage to Bilbo. Bilbo will then defend, and he'll take one point of damage. So that basically means we have three times that we can fail riddles. Otherwise, we lose the game. So yeah, this might not happen in my first try. <laughs> Over here in the magic ring, it says attached to Bilbo Baggins. When answering a riddle, spend one of Bilbo's resources to discard an additional player card from the top of your deck. You can also exhaust Bilbo's magic ring and raise each player's threat by two to add one resource to Bilbo Baggins' resource pool. But if you do that and you fail, he then cannot defend and Gollum will do two automatic points of damage to him. <laughs> oh man, they sure like to make this tight. Here we have the three heroes we're going to play with today, Nori, Dane, and Thorin. We have a total of 32 for our starting threat. Bilbo is over here riddling in the riddle area. <laughs> and don't forget, he does have the ring attached to him. I'm realizing I don't think we looked at 2B here. So this says, players cannot advance to stage 3A unless both 1B and 2B are complete. Progress tokens cannot be added or removed to this quest except by answering riddles. Cards in the riddle area are immune to player card effects and cannot leave the riddle area. So we have to succeed in a total of nine different ways. I don't know exactly how that riddling is going to work because I haven't played this quest. So we're going to experience it together. To start the game, we'll draw our six cards. We have Dwarven Shield. Nice. Hitting Cash. Not so nice. Gloin. We have Dunedain Remedy. Gosh, that saved me last time. One, two, three, four. Five, long beard elder, and six. Ooh, or Christ. Hmm. You know, besides the hidden cash. Ah. Uh, 
I always have a hard time deciding. I think I am going to mulligan this one. Here we go. Here's our take two. We have ring mail. We have bofer. We have a very good tail. Oh, I like that one. Sneak attack. We have a will of the west. Gosh, I always seem to draw that card. One, two, three, four, five, and one more. Narvi's belt. Okay, that's not terrible. We'll go ahead and start the first round. We'll generate four resources, one for Bilbo and one for each of our dwarves. And we'll draw a card. And we have King Under the Mountain. Heck yes. I honestly think the first thing we're going to do is go ahead and use King Under the Mountain. So we're going to take both of our resources. We're going to put that out on Thorin. And then we're going to exhaust that so we can reveal the top two cards of our deck. Add one to our hand and discard the other. Oh, yes. Perfect. So we're going to add Longbeard. We're going to discard Arid Loon Miner, which means he will come out into play. So I don't really know the encounter set in this at all. So I, we only have one threat in the staging area, but we are drawing two cards. So I think I'm going to go ahead and quest with Arid Loon Miner for two and Nori for a total of three. So I'll be five to one. We'll reveal the top card of the encounter deck, and we have the Vorg's Glade. Okay, so we have a forced effect. After a character takes damage from an attack made by a creature enemy, remove one progress from the current quest. Oh, that's gross. Oh, but this also has a riddle effect. Okay, so right now we can decide whether we want to place this card in the staging area or whether we want to activate the riddle and try and solve it. We might as well do the riddle because this sounds terrible as a forced effect. Go ahead. Then. What has roots as nobody sees is taller than trees. Up, up it goes, and yet never grows. The first player names a sphere, shuffles his deck, and discards the top card. For each of those cards that matches, place one progress token on stage two. Well, you guys, leadership is probably the most likely of sorts that we would be drawing from our deck. Although I do have a lot of random colors in this deck, so I guess we'll see. This needs to be leadership. Oh, it is! That's a very good tale. Awesome. Okay, so we discard that, and we have now placed one progress on 2A. Or I should say 2B. Now, since we decided to resolve the riddle effect... We can discard this card, and now, which is great because we don't put it in the staging area, <laughs> and now we'll go ahead and reveal the next card because remember, we have to do two. Okay, let's see what this one is. When revealed, each character gets minus one willpower and cannot attack until the end of the round. Okay, that's not terrible. Arid and Nori would each be, what, Arid would be one and Nori would be two then. So we have three to the one in the staging area. So we also will place two progress on out to the frying pan. So actually, that was not bad. We placed a total of three progress. I'm feeling pretty good. We'll go ahead and end the round. We'll move ourselves up to 33 threat. Because remember, we don't get to reduce our threat when we play a card from our deck or from discarding. We reduce threat only when we play dwarves from our hand. So then we'll generate three resources over here. And we have one for Bilbo that will also have. So now he has two resources, which is great because we're probably going to have to utilize that to make sure we can riddle successfully. And we'll draw a card. And we have Feely. Sweet. To start round two, we'll go ahead and do the King Under the Mountain. We will reveal the top two cards. So we either have Erebor Guard, which we could actually play, or the Dwarven Shield. Yeah. I'm going to discard the Dwarven Shield. I'm going to put the Erebor Guard into my hand. And I think, based on everything else in my hand, I'm definitely going to play the Erebor Guard because I can this round. And now I'll have five Dwarves out. So more resource generation. But to do that, I have to discard the top two cards of my deck. Oh, there's Keeley. That's terrible. Because I have Feely in my hand and I was going to pull him out, but now I can't. And well-equipped. Nah. I mean, a bummer, because I didn't get to play it, but that's okay. What do you guys think about having a little bit of fun? Let's go ahead and play a very good tale. So what you do with a very good tale is you exhaust two allies. Then you discard the top five cards of your deck, and you can put into play any allies that you flip over that the total cost is equal to the two exhausted allies. So I have a total of seven here. So let's see what we get. We get another Arid Guard, that's awesome. We get a Dwarven Cell Sword, that's two. A Test of Will, that's a bummer, we won't get that one. Hardy Leadership, 
and well equipped. Wow. Well, we definitely won't be well equipped. Well, we got two more allies out. I will have to pay for the dwarven cell sword, but that's okay. I still, it still feels great to get a bunch of allies out. So we'll put this arid out here, and our dwarven cell sword can be right here. We also did play one dwarf from her hand, so our threat will go back down to 32. Now we get to decide on questing. I definitely think I'm going to do three again for Nori and three for our Dwarven Sellsword. That's six. Six to one in the staging area. Our first card from the encounter deck is a Goblin Driver. When revealed, the first player exhausts one character he controls. Ugh. I think I'm going to have to do the Airborne Guard. So we'll exhaust him, and now we have four threat out in the staging area. And then we're going to have to flip the second card, and this one has a riddle. 30 white horses on a red hill. First they champ, then they stamp, then they stand still. I realize I'm not giving you guys the answers. You probably know what they are, but I just really enjoy reading them. Hope that's okay. The first player names a sphere and a cost and shuffles his desk, deck, and then discards the top two cards. For each of those cards that matches both items, place one progress token on stage two. Holy moly, both items? So a sphere and a cost. Okay, well, you guys, I don't really know what I'm going to do here. <laughs> I'm thinking of doing no sphere, so uh, colorless sphere. I don't even know if I can do that, but I'm gonna, because come on. Color sphere, zero because I'm really hoping that I will discard a hidden cache. <laughs> I don't know what else to do. Okay, so I have to reveal two cards. So here's the first. That is a colorless zero, well-equipped, but that's not, um, not the one that I wanted, but wow, that actually worked. Okay, and then here's our second card, and it's a Narvi's belt. Okay, but <laughs> I actually got one. So that will give us, what is it, one progress? Man, that's not a lot but I will take it. That is two. We have to do this seven more times. Holy moly. Looking here, we have a total of four threat in the staging area. We quested for six, so we'll place two more progress here on the frying pan. We'll move to the encounter phase, and we're definitely going to have this goblin driver come here, and we'll place a shadow card. I think what I'm going to have to do here is exhaust Dane to defend. He's got three defense this is attacking for two. Defending player raises his threat by X. X is the number of goblin enemies engaged with him. Well, you know, what's life without a little threat? <laughs> so we'll move to 33 threat, but that only attacks for two, and Dane can block for three, so we're fine. Thorn can then attack for three. He only does one point of, da of damage to that driver, so we're going to have to take him out. But at least we've got the threat out of the staging area. We're going to go ahead and end the round. First thing that will happen is we'll use one of these resources so we can keep our Dwarven Cell Sword. We will then refresh. Yeah, I'm going to have to just soak that resource because he is awesome. He's a 3-3 three, three with 2 shield and 3 health. <laughs> and then we'll place resources 2 here on Thorin. And we'll also place one more on Bilbo. I have 3 resources on Bilbo, so I have to remember that. We also go up to 30 for Threat. And we'll go ahead and draw a card, and we have a test of will. Oh, nice. I think the only card we're going to play this round is our Longbeard Elder. He costs three leadership. One, two, three. What's really nice about him is that he will let us look at the top card of the encounter deck. Yes, we have to have already quested with everybody, but we can decide or at least see what it is. And if it's a location, we can place one progress on the current quest. Cool. I mean, why not, right? I did almost forget we have King Under the Mountain, so we'll go ahead and re uh, exhaust that. Reveal these two. A sneak attack. Oh, Dwarven, Dwarven Shield. The sneak attack is great, but I don't have any Gandalfs in my hand, and Dwarven Shield can come out and either be thrown on Thorin so he can defend, or maybe on Dane. For questing this round, we'll go ahead and do three with a Dwarven Cell Sword, three with the, or two with Heirloom Miner for five, three from Nori, so that's eight. And then 3 here, 9, 10, 11 uh, um, from Longbeard. So 11 to 1. Ooh, that's kind of a lot. You know what? I think I'm going to save Air Loon Miner. So we have 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9 right now. We'll reveal the top card of this. Oh, it's not a location. So he's back down to 8. So it's 8 to 1. We'll now flip this card. And we have Wild Vargs. Well, I definitely don't want to deal with that. So we're going to do the riddle. Call it! Call him. Voiceless, it cries. 
wingless flutters, toothless bites, mouthless mutters. Go ahead. Then. The first player names a card type, shuffles his deck, and discards the top two cards. For each of those cards that matches, place one progress token on stage two. Ooh, this should be good. As with most dwarves decks, most of the cards we have in our deck, not most, but a lot of them are allies. So I think we're going to go ahead and say allies. And we'll discard two cards. Uh, let's do this one. That's an ally. And this one. That's an ally. So that's two progress. And I think I am going to spend one of Bilbo's resources. Come on. Be another ally. Be another ally. That's three. That's three allies. Okay, should I go again? No, he has two. If ever I need to add more resources, I'm going to stop. Wow. <laughs> three. The only problem is two of these are my really good attackers that I just discarded. <laughs> but three progress is fantastic. We now have a total of five out of the nine we need for riddling. Wow, we are such good Riddlers. Well, that was only our first card. <laughs> Let's go to our second. And we have Goblin Runners. Okay, and they have Surge, so they're just going to come out into the staging area. And we'll flip another one. Are you serious? Another Goblin Runner? Okay, that's going to gain Surge. All right, when revealed, the first player names a card type and then discards the top three cards of the encounter deck. For each of those cards that do not match the name type, remove one progress token from stage two. This cannot be canceled. Oh, that would be absolutely horrendous. Okay, well, this is terrible. So I'm going to go ahead and discard this. I think I'm going to say uh, enemy. So let's see. Our first one is an enemy. Thank goodness. Our second one is an enemy. <laughs> and... Our third one, wow, all three enemies. <laughs> okay, so that d means no discarding of progress. We quested for eight. There's three threat in the staging area, so we placed five progress. Five, six, seven, eight, nine. We just need five more progress. But during the in in our engagement or encounter phase, both of these goblins are going to engage us. Now we have three goblins on us. We'll go ahead and place shadow cards for combat. Okay, what do I want to do? I have two air guards, airborne guards, and an heirloom miner here. So I think I'm going to defend with one airborne guard, and I'm going to have this three attacker attack there, and he has a shadow effect. It gets plus one attack, of course. So it attacks for four. That hits our airborne guard for two. Oh, ooh, those are definitely not three. He'd be dead. <laughs> Here we go for two. I think for the second three attack that we have here, the Goblin Runner, we're going to exhaust this Erebor Guard to defend. And we have no shadow effect. So he only takes one point of damage. And then I think we're going to go undefended because if I go undefended, I can hopefully take a couple of these enemies out because he's only attacking for three. Three. Oh, I did this wrong. He was attacking for two. Oh, I did them all wrong. So that's okay. He only would have taken one point of damage because he got the plus one. So he's attacking for three. Do I want to take that undefended? I guess I'm going to. Three. Oh, okay. It might have been okay. We'll place three on Nori. Oh. Now, though, let's go ahead and attack. Thorin has an attack of four thanks to Dane. So he's going to attack this goblin driver. He's got two shield and two health left. That's going to take him out. Then we're going to have Dane and Erdlun Miner attack. Now when Dane exhausts, Erdlun Miner uh, loses his plus one attack. So we only have a total of three attack, but that should take out one of these goblin runners. That way we only have one left. Whew. Okay, that means we will increase our threat to end the round. We'll pay this resource to keep the Dwarven Cell Sword out. Thank goodness. We will then generate resources after we take all of this off. And I need to find that Dunedain Remedy to take care of some people. So Bilbo is going to get one resource. We'll place one here, one on Dane, and two on Thorin. And, of course, we'll draw our top card. And we have Gandalf. That's awesome. The first thing we'll do in our planning phase is go ahead and exhaust King Under the Mountain. We'll reveal the top two cards. That is awesome. Thank you, Hidden Cash. We will discard this. That will allow us to generate two resources. We're going to generate two resources for uh, Dane. Heck yes. Okay. Then what we're going to do, 
we can put Unexpected Courage in our hand, but we're immediately going to play it. We're going to use Nori's two resources, and that's going to go on Dane. So now Dane can defend and then still be ready. <laughs> awesome. Also, I think I'm going to go ahead and play Feely. That's going to decrease our threat back down to 34. We will use all three of Dane's resources for that. And unfortunately, Keely was discarded, so yeah, we don't get to grab Keely for free. But hey, another dwarf's another dwarf. Then what we'll do is we'll move to the quest phase. In the quest phase, I'm going to go ahead and play Sneak Attack, spend one of Thorin's remaining two resources, Sneak Attack Gandalf in, he'll do four points of damage, immediately kills this Goblin Runner. See ya. We have a totally clear board here, which is awesome. So now let's see what we're going to quest with. Now Gandalf will go back to our hand at the end of this phase. We'll quest with four, five, six, seven for now, unless we do not reveal location, which I haven't seen a single location in encounter card ye or encounter deck yet. Seven, uh, eight, nine, ten, eleven. Awesome. We'll reveal the top card here. And we have a riddle. And an and, 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 and eye in a blue face saw an eye in a green face. That eye is like to, to this eye, said the first eye, but in low place, not in high place. The first player names a card type and a sphere, shuffles his deck, then discards the top three cards. For each of those cards that matches both items, place one progress on stage two. Okay, I need to say a type and a sphere. Well, I think with what is left in my deck, I'm going to say type is an attachment and sphere is leadership. Okay, so I can do three here. We've got five. There's no way I'm going to get three of these in a row. Let's see. One. No, that's a failure. Two. That's a failure. But hey, you know what? He comes out because I'm discarding him. <laughs> I love that. Okay. And three. No, that's that's a total fail. So I'm going to go ahead and spend one resource from Bilbo. Come on. And no, that's still not going to work. Okay. Another resource from Bilbo. <laughs> Come on. There's one. Okay, so at least Gollum doesn't attack. That'll be our sixth progress. It's the question of do I want to push it again? I think I'm going to save it. I think I'm going to save Bilbo's last resource just in case. So all of these go to my discard pile. Actually, it's really good I have a Will of the West in my hand. <laughs> so we'll discard this, and let's see what the next one is. Oh, we have another riddle. Gollum! Gollum! It cannot be seen. Cannot be felt, cannot be heard, and cannot be smelt. It lies behind stars and under hills, and empty holes it fills. It comes first and follows after, ends life, kills laughter. The first player names a sphere and cost, shuffles his deck, then discards the top two cards. For each of those cards that matches both items, place one progress on stage two. Ah, oh, a sphere and a cost. Well, I think the best one here is going to be uh, leadership and zero. Because I think I've got two uh, very good tails. And I, I don't think I've seen a Dunedain Remedy yet at all. And there's, th there's at least two of those. So we'll do zero and leadership. <laughs> oh, man, I don't know. All right, I only get to reveal two cards. Come on, come on. No, nope, but hey, discard it. He comes out. <laughs> That's the only nice thing. All right, here's our second card. Oh, yes, leadership sphere done. That is awesome. So that gives us uh, another progress. I cannot believe I'm getting this. That is seven progress. We only need to get two more. Oh, do I take the chance? Do I take the chance now? He's got one more resource. Um, uh, why? Yes, no, I don't know. If only you guys were here to tell me, should I stretch it? Should I stretch it? I'm going to wait. I'm going to wait till next round because we've got his resource that we will have two next time that we can use to then be able to hopefully get it right a next time and maybe get two because this one was only drawing two cards and I have to be the name and the sphere, which is hard. We quested for a total of 10 and there's only one in the staging area. So that means we'll place nine progress here. 
Yeah, we have definitely escaped. Gandalf and the dwarves have escaped. Perfect. Totally thematic. Gandalf came in, saved their butts. <laughs> But now we just have to get Bilbo to get two more progress to be able to win. I shouldn't say win, just get to stage three. And of course, my deck is over three-fourths gone. At the end of the quest phase, Gandalf will come back to our hand. We'll go ahead and refresh. We'll have to spend this resource. Now, do I want to keep the Dwarven Cell Sword out? I've got a ton of dwarves now. I think I might pass. See, that's what's great about him. You can keep him out for a while, and then when he gets too expensive, you can just pass on him. Because we've got three Arab Erdloon Miners. I was really hoping I'd discard them. <laughs> so, okay, we'll take these off. We'll move our threat back up to 35. We'll gen four resources here. One, two, three, and four. And then we'll do one for Bilbo as well. Nice. And then we'll draw a card and we have a very good tail. Ooh. After going back and forth on this, I think we're gonna go ahead and take the chance on the very good tail. We're gonna exhaust two heirloom miners. We have a total of six costs we can play with. Ah, we lost one Will of the West. Hitting cash, we'll generate two resources. Definitely gonna put those on Thorn. Thorn is gonna fill himself up with resources. And here's number three. Yes, heirloom miner or Arid battle master. For another one of those, uh, two more resources for Thorin. Yeah, see, this quest is kind of built for the dwarf deck. <laughs> and five, um, Miner of the Iron Hills. Cool. Well, that's three plus two is five. We exhausted a total of six costs worth. Great. We can put both of them out. And just so you guys know, this Erebor Battlemaster's attack right now is ten. <laughs> that's awesome. The next thing I think we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and put this Narvi belt down. We'll spend one resource from Thorin and one resource from Dane. Then what we'll do is we'll go ahead and spend two resources from Thorin. We're going to exhaust that Narvi's belt to say that it is tactics so we can put this ring mail. Attached to a dwarf or hobbit character, it gets plus one hit point and plus one shield. Definitely putting that on Dane. So now he's four shield and six hit points. <laughs> and we'll use up these two resources. And then I think the final thing we'll do is we'll go ahead and place out this dwarven shield. This is also restricted, so that's going to fill up Dane. That gives him another plus one shield. And that's going to cost two more leadership resources. So Dane will get two additional shield tokens. His shield is five, his health is six. For questing this round, we'll go ahead and have our Longbeard Elder go. We will also have Feely go, that's for uh, three, four, five. Then we'll do a six, seven here, eight, nine, ten here. And I think that's it. Ten to one, we can reveal the top card if this is a location, which it's not, it's gonna be an enemy that surges, wonderful. So we know for sure this is going to be our Goblin Runner, which will surge into a location. Wow. The Goblin's Cave. Oh, we know what this is. While the Goblin's Cave is the active location, enemies get plus one threat. Okay. And then our second card slash three. Oh, is another riddle. Uh, a box without hinges, key, or lid, yet golden treasure inside is hid. The first player names a card type, shuffles his deck, and discards the top two cards. For each of those cards that matches, place one progress on stage two. Okay, we just need to do this twice. We need to get two right. So with this, I don't know. I only, I know I have two Gandalfs left, so maybe I'll go ahead and do ally. Because I know I have two Gandalfs. <laughs> Look at my deck. It is not that many cards left. So come on, maybe it's this one. Ally. Let's see, <laughs> yes, okay, that is one progress, okay, uh, second one, ally, no, uh, definitely adding the resource, uh, not an ally, we're going to add the last resource, come on, come on, be an ally, ah, man, okay, so we're out of resources, but you know what, what we can do as an action is exhaust Bilbo's magic ring and add two res or increase our threat by two, which we're going to do, to add two resources to him. So we're going to add two more because I know one of these has got to be the other um, Gandalf card. 
So um, let's hope it's this one. Yes, it is. <laughs> <laughs> All right, that's going to give us the pros the progress that we need to get to the next quest card. Heck yes, with one card left in our deck. To everyone's surprise, Bilbo Baggins rejoined his companions on the eastern side of the Misty Mountains. However, their celebration was cut short by the chilling sound of wolves howling close by. To the frightened hobbit, it seemed that they had escaped from the goblin only to be eaten by vargs. When revealed, the first player gains control of Bilbo Baggins. Yes! Reveal one encounter card per player and add it to the staging area. Gollum engages the first player. Damage from undefended attacks made by Gollum must be placed on Bilbo Baggins. All riddle effects are ignored. Treachery cards gain surge. Oh! <laughs> Treachery cards gain surge? That's just, that's just mean, don't you think? So we'll go ahead and grab the encounter deck right here. We'll flip this card up, and when revealed, the first player exhausts one character he controls. Ooh, do I reveal or do I add? Let me see. What did this say? It says reveal, so that definitely happens. So we'll go ahead and exhaust our Miner of the Iron Hills. Gollum will also come out and engage us right now. So we're going to have three enemies on us. Wonderful. We do, though, only need 16 progress. And don't forget, this location gets removed from the game. It's gone. Because all of the goblins are going to engage us, let's go ahead and travel to the goblins cave. We'll get that three threat out of the staging area. Yeah, they'll have plus one threat, but they won't be in the staging area, so who cares? Now we have a pretty substantial board state here. I'm trying to get everything on the board or on the screen. Sorry you're missing the Airborne Battlemaster. He will come into play soon. <laughs> we'll go ahead and place out three shadow cards. We'll start with Gollum. Gollum is attacking for two. We're definitely not going undefended on that. Our Erebor guard will block two. And then this says, defending player deals damage among characters he controls equal to the number of goblin enemies engaged with him. Well, that's actually only two because Gollum is not a goblin. So we'll go ahead and do one point of damage to the miner of the Iron Hills and one here to the Erdloon miner. Okay, he only attacks for two. Our Erebor guard has two defense, doesn't do anything. This uh, goblin driver will attack for two. I think I'll exhaust the other Erebor guard to block that. And it says it gets, mi oh, minus one shield, so it's just like plus one attack. So that will mean he has a total of one damage. So the Erebor guard is one point away from death. And then this final attack, we'll go ahead and have this uh, be used by Dane. He's going to defend. He's got five defense. He's attacking for three. Nothing else here. Totally blocks. So we'll go ahead and then use our unexpected courage to ready Dane. We then can attack with Thorin. Thorin has three. Plus one is four attack. And we'll add in Bilbo Baggins over here for one. That's a total of five. Three plus two is five. This one's done. We have our Erebor Battlemaster over here. He's going to attack for 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. That is going to take out Gollum. <laughs> nice. And I don't think anyone is left to take out this Goblin Runner. Nope. We, oh, Dane could attack on his own, so he might as well attack and do one point of damage to him. Oh, if only he had something to make him stronger in his attack. Overall, not too shabby if you ask me. We'll move ourselves up to 20 or 38. Oh, 38 threat, you guys. That is pretty high. I'll refresh this off the camera. I'll add resources. Don't forget, Thorn will gain two. We'll also go ahead and draw our only card we have left in our deck. We should all know what it is. Or Christ. Of course. <laughs> that means the first thing we're going to go ahead and do is a Will of the West. We're going to spend one resource here, and we're going to take our entire deck and reshuffle it but then this Will of the West is removed from the game. We'll start this planning phase by exhausting King of the, Under the Mountain. We'll look, hmm, definitely don't need King Under the Mountain. We'll put a very good tail in our hand. Now, that, that's a question. We could try and get more allies out. I don't know, though. I'm actually thinking of trying to end it right here. Like, let's just do this. We're going to go ahead and play Gandalf from our hand. Sorry about the glare. I'll put him down over here. There we go. One, two three, four, five. We'll use his ability to instantly kill this goblin runner. I hate those goblin runners. <laughs> we'll also throw down 
Orc Christ or Or Christ. I'm, I'm, if I'm saying that wrong, I'm sorry. I don't know how I'm supposed to say that. <laughs> that gives him plus two attack. And then I think we're going to go ahead and quest. And we're going to quest hard. We need 16. So we're going to go ahead and do one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, nineteen, twenty, twenty-one, twenty-two, twenty-three. 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24, 25, 26. <laughs> Come on. That's got to be enough. And I have a potential of adding three more with Bofer in my hand. We'll flip the top card, and we have a when revealed. The first player must choose to answer the riddle. Okay, all riddle effects are ignored, and this is a treachery card, so the first treachery card gains search. All right, we'll flip the second one. When revealed. Starting with the first player, each player must search the encounter deck. Nah, 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 nah. I'm not going to do any of that. I'm going to test of will that. Use Nori's resource. Boom. Done. 26 questing. That totally takes out into the fire. What fire? <laughs> when you've got this many dwarves, who cares about a fire? <laughs> there you have it. That was Dungeons Deep and Caverns Dim. I hope you guys enjoyed it. I had a lot of fun. I hope it's okay I read those riddles. There's a few that we didn't get to, but yeah, it just adds some theme to me. I enjoy it. <laughs> if you didn't, please, I'm sorry. I'm not great at making the voice of Gollum, but heh. that is the end of The Hobbit Overhill and Underhill. So the next one that we'll do is The Hobbit on the Doorstep. There will be three more quests here. After this, we can move into the Lord of the Rings saga where we'll have Frodo instead of Bilbo. Thank you all so much for watching. If I made any mistakes, I apologize. I hope you guys enjoyed it, and I will see you at the next stop. Bye.